I eat out three times a day, every single day, and I actually think it's saving me money. Let me show you how. Welcome back to a new video. My name is Sean and today I want to break down something that a lot of people talk to me about when it comes to my day-to-day -day life. I want to break down how much money I'm spending by eating out three times a day in comparison to what you'd be spending if you were to go traditional grocery shopping. And if you know me or you're a subscriber on this channel, you'll know that I am kind of a finance nerd and I will be doing a very detailed cost analysis on this. And if you're not a subscriber, I don't know what you're waiting for. But okay, when I was younger, I had a very detailed breakdown of how much money I spent on the food I was eating. And this was mainly in college. I mean, I was so dialed in on my routine that I would go to the store every single Sunday, I would get the exact same items every single Sunday, and it would perfectly last me seven days a week until I go to the grocery store again the next Sunday. And the thing I'm like not so proud of is the fact that I ate the same thing every single day of my life. And I know it sounds horrible, but I actually enjoyed that food. I didn't mind it at all, and I was super, super cost savvy as I was spending very little money per meal that I was eating every single day. But fast forward to today, my eating habits are vastly different, and you probably think I'm absolutely insane for eating out three times a day, but I wanna break down why I do it first. And again, if you're a longtime subscriber, you'll know that I have my hands in a lot of things, and I'm a very busy guy, whether it's posting videos on YouTube, which I know I've been slacking lately, I'm gonna start posting more, I promise. Or it's doing mortgages with my mortgage company, X2 Mortgage, whether it's office furniture with my uh, standing desk company called Direction Desk. There's so many other things, managing rental properties, you know, all, all sorts of side hustles that I kinda do um, on my day to day, which makes my life incredibly, incredibly busy. I've actually sat down and kind of looked at it. I'm averaging about 12 hour work days, six to seven days a week. So finding the time to actually sit down and eat is very challenging for me, let alone actually make that food, prepare that food, grocery shop for that food, whatever it might be. So you can kinda see this transition from going in college to basically having my food dialed in and cooking and having all this time because I was in college to now being busier and busier and busier to where I'm doing so much throughout the day that I'm just so hungry by the time I realize I haven't eaten anything yet and I don't want to go to the store, buy stuff, come home, prepare it, cook it, eat it, do the dishes, and then kind of go about my day. That is so much more time, so I've kind of slacked off on that routine and that's why I basically go, I'm starving, I want food in my belly, ASAP. I'm gonna go hit Chipotle. Anywho, let's go over the cost analysis of this and everything in this video is gonna be based on the state of Arizona because that's where I live. And this should actually be a pretty good baseline because US News ranked Arizona as the 29th state in terms of affordability. So almost right smack in the middle at 25. So on average, my breakfast consists of pretty much a large iced tea than something small like a breakfast burrito from Salad and Go, breakfast sandwich from Dunkin', breakfast sandwich from Starbucks, something healthy from Tropical Smoothie, I pretty much hit the same regular routine five days a week, um, and sometimes it even drips into the weekend as well. If you haven't noticed by now, I am a creature of habit. But on average, my breakfast comes out to $7.86. Now, let's back up and let's actually buy each of those individual items at the grocery store as if we were to be preparing it or cooking it. Uh, let's go check out those prices. All right, iced tea, $3.99 on sale, after tax, $4.23. Butter. 580. 12 eggs, 527 after tax. Tortillas, bagels, cheese. Bagels are five dollars and six cents. We got tortillas after taxes, six dollars and eighty-five cents. Eight dollars and forty-four cents for like twenty. After tax, four dollars and seventy-four cents. After taxes, seven dollars and thirty-eight cents. Cheddar, ninety-nine. After tax, okay, three dollars and sixteen cents for a good amount. So if we add all of those up, and there's probably some things I'm forgetting here and there, but that should be a decent analysis of it all. If we add it all up, we're getting seven dollars and fifty-two cents per meal. Now, using the same method for lunches and dinner, and for lunches, you know, I'm going to places like Chipotle, as I love Chipotle. Local sandwich shops, I'm going to Cane's, Salad and Go again, because that place is literally fire. 
and I'm spending on average $10.69, which some people are probably gonna say, Sean, that is way too cheap, I do not believe you. But one thing you have to kind of take into account is I'm not actually buying drinks with my lunches on these because I'm typically driving really quickly to one of these places, grabbing my food, and going back to the office to work and eat at my desk. Um, and I'll typically just fill up my water bottle at the office. So I'm not buying any drinks. I'm typically not you know, going all out on all these sides and everything. I'm literally just getting a base meal from one of those places, even Chick-fil-A sometimes, and that's kind of the average cost breakdown. And this is actually very similar to the dinner breakdown because um, it's pretty sad, but I'm literally eating at the same places for dinner as well. Now, the average cost is actually $11.70, and that's a little bit higher than lunches because occasionally I will go treat myself, get something a little bit nicer, and that kind of brings the overall average up. Now, when it comes to grocery shopping for each of these two meals, you know, I'm looking at things like buying sandwich meat, cheese, bread, chicken, steak, pizzas, sides, you know, like rice, vegetables, potatoes, mac and cheese, I don't know, whatever else there is for sides. And then condiments, spices, herbs, and whatever else. And remember, I'm like very, very basic and I am no primo chef, so I am literally going with the absolute basics of a meal and not getting too complex with, you know, you need the Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire? Sauces or whatever, and then like baggies and Tupperware, and I don't even know what else goes into all that. And the average person will probably spend more and get more things, but again, I eat to fuel myself. Uh, a lot of other people are gonna eat because they really enjoy it and they're gonna go all out on their meals. So there's probably some things I'm forgetting, but that's a very basic list that we should be able to base things off of. So even with my basicness, we're looking at $8.89 for lunches and $10. 1049 for dinners if you were to cook or prepare those meals. And a couple things to note, I am not factoring in the time it takes to actually go and get the meals, whether it's um, you know hitting the Chipotle's, the Chick-fil-A's, all those places. I'm not accounting for the time it takes to get those because you're also having to go to the grocery store and walk around the millions of aisles of, of food and pick out everything and then come back. So I just kind of figured it would be a lot easier and just treat it as a wash because I'm also going to places when I eat out that's on my way to wherever I'm going. Like I'm literally driving to some and I'm like, oh yeah, I love that place. I'm gonna stop and eat there. Oh yeah, I'm hungry. I should probably stop and eat. Um, so those items with the time of getting each of the things is a wash, or at least we'll treat it as a wash. So you're probably sitting there going, Sean, did you not look at the math before you made this video? It looks like it's cheaper to actually cook or prepare your food. But the one thing we do have to account for is the time it takes to actually prepare that food. When I go to my Chipotle, I'm not basically sitting there for 30 minutes until I get my food. No, I'm getting my food in like five to 10 minutes. So we do need to account for the time it takes to actually prepare that food and even sometimes clean up afterwards. Oh, and side note, if you enjoy cooking and it's kind of like a leisure activity or a hobby for you, then this does not apply to you. And honestly, this whole video does not apply to you. But me on the other hand, I hate cooking. I hate preparing food. I suck at it, which is probably why I hate it. Um, and so that's why we really need to account for it. And you have to kind of remember that, that not only is my time valuable, but your time. Everyone's time is valuable. Whether you have a monetary value on that time or not, it doesn't matter. Time is the most valuable thing in the world. I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for this, but you need to account for that when it comes down to a cost analysis. Now, I have timed this, and some people are more efficient than others, but on average, cooking per meal is gonna be about 45 minutes. Now, don't lose your mind. Obviously, breakfast and lunches are way quicker. We're gonna use 15 minutes for breakfast and 15 minutes for lunch. Dinners are probably gonna be more like an hour Hour, so that's kind of why we get that average of 45. But again, 15 minutes for breakfast, 15 minutes for lunches, and an hour for cooking dinner. Now, I'm not gonna use my hourly rate for cooking because that could be a little bit skewed. We're gonna use the minimum wage of Arizona, which right now it's $12.80. So if we kind of take that time and how much time it takes to make each of those meals and we factor those into our calculations, that's gonna look like. And we've got $3.20 for cooking breakfast, which brings the total to $10.72 per meal. Lunch, we've got $3.20 as well, which brings that total to $12.09. And dinner, this is the big kicker, $12.80 for cooking, which brings the total to $23.29. So that means it's actually cheaper for me to go out and eat three meals a day than it would be to actually grocery shop and cook or prepare that food. Now, I have to say, this applies to my life. If you have tons of time on your hand, please do not do this. You can eat for far cheaper if you actually go to the grocery store, buy in bulk, meal prep, do all that fun stuff. Um, but I don't have that kind of time. And so if you're like me, and you can never find enough time, going out and eating is actually a lot cheaper than actually grocery shopping, preparing it yourself. And I also have to mention that if you have a, a more higher end, like 
uh, taste palette, you're going to be spending a lot more when you go out to eat. I don't really care for too many fancy dinners and, and lunches and things like that, so I'm not spending tons of money when I'm going out and eating, but you could very easily spend $20, $30, $40 per meal if you're going to a lot nicer places. So you really have to apply it to your specific life. And then the other thing I probably should mention at the beginning of this video, which is super important, is that I'm eating for one person. Okay, that's vastly different. If you go out and you take a family of four to go eat dinner or eat lunch or even eat breakfast, it's going to be far more expensive um, than it's going to actually be to cook or prepare that, that food because when you cook or prepare it, you're not spending any extra time. You're literally just adding more servings onto your stove or, or into your oven or whatever it might be. So you're not actually adding more time, which means your overall cost per meal is a lot lower. It's a lot different when you're living the bachelor life, but that is the full breakdown that I've been meaning to make for a super long time because a lot of people go crazy when I say I eat out three times a day. Now I'm going to be sending them this video and being like, look, it's actually cheaper for me to do. And trust me when I say this, I'm incredibly meticulous when it comes to my finances. So if I saw this habit kind of spiraling out of control or costing far more than what I just broke down in this video, I would definitely revert back to actually cooking or preparing some food. If you have good discipline, this habit is actually a financially healthy habit. Now, is the food in it being kind of like a human healthy habit? Probably not, <laughs> but when it comes to the finances, it is. Either way, I am interested in hearing your opinion on this, so please drop me a comment down below on your lifestyle. If you like this video, if you didn't like this video, whatever it might be, um, I would love to hear your opinion. Hit that like button on this video because it took me a long time to make, and, um, and yeah, I guess just hit the like button because that's what everyone else always says. But ultimately, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found some value out of it. If you did, please hit that subscribe button and I will catch you in the next video. Yeah, he's wrong. <laughs>